What does Antonio Caroli mean to the sport? He's the face of the sport, he's the ambassador. With Jeffrey now beating him and faster than him at races, is the sport ready for that? And is Jeffrey ready for, to take on that ambassador role? Hard to say, because we all used how Tony acts and reacts, and he's a great ambassador for the sport. Antonio is a hero to have nine titles, to always compete 100%, always open to uh, help the promotion of the sport. No matter what happens this year or, or in the future, I mean, Tony has proven everything. Huh? Always in the racing, showing that real fighting spirit. Motocross is a sport which is not as known as soccer, cycling, Formula One, but Tony is one of those guys that lifts the sport definitely up. I have a lot of respect for Tony. He does a lot for the motocross. He's the best ambassador that we have. And also, I mean, as a rider, he's, he showed many great things. If Tony would win the 10th championship, it would be cool to stay the number one, but records are there to be broken. So if I have to choose, and I would choose Tony to do that. Going into the 2018 season, Antonio Caroli had nine world championships and needed just one more to stand next to Stefan Everts as the greatest of all time. But Jeffrey Hurlings has looked unbeatable all season and needs just a 16th place finish at his home race in Austin to displace Caroli as motocross world champion and face of the sport. Oh, Jeffrey Van Roem. I see at moment that he is over weg wil lopen, that he het allemaal te veel vindt. Maar hij weet, het moet. Ik moet mijn eigen gedragen. Ik moet er aan mee werken. Walking up to the starting gate, all the TV channels they were live and just brings a lot of extra pressure. And you see all the crowd all in orange. Many had a hurling t-shirt and you just know like there's maybe 30, 40, 50,000 people all here coming to see me win. I knew it was going to be the most important race of my life. Where are you right before the gate drops? You're hiding somewhere. It's so hard to find you. We try to get a shot of you. It's impossible. You're like a some sort of animal that you never see, like a Bigfoot. <laughs> I always show up like just before the signing lap. At the truck, we have the clock right there. I just sit there in the chair waiting and I'm just visualizing the race. You know, I don't want to be influenced by other riders or whatsoever when I'm just alone, I can just think. People don't judge Jeffrey in the right way because I see many times and I get angry when I see that they say, ah, oh, he's an arrogant, he's a bad kid. It's not true, he's not true at all. But uh, I believe he sacrificed a lot uh, compared to one boy of 23 years old uh, because this is a sport, a really demanding sport. And if you're not there with the head, then you can have uh, serious problems, you know? Jeffrey is heel hard for his eigen. He is recht door. It moet hard werken. Alles te veroveren hebben. Alles opzij zetten. Drinken doet hij nooit. Hij heeft nog nooit gedronken. Misschien één of twee glaasjes in 24 jaar. Die kent geen gulden middenweg. Die wil in alles winnen. Dat is zijn mentaliteit. Maintaining a clear head may be one of Jeffrey's most important challenges. He is nearly always racing at higher speeds than his competition, and motocross crashes have taken him to the hospital with broken bones every year for the past five years, costing him three championships. This year, chasing his first MXGP 450 world title, Jeffrey has restricted his influences more than ever. We always joke with him because one of his weak points were the girls, of course. For sure, he has a lot of girlfriends or yeah, fans. And then instead, this year is really, you know, focus, focus, focus. So far in the 2018 season, Hurlings has won a record 29 races and 15 Grand Prix overalls. And on several occasions, charging from 10 to 15 seconds behind Caroli to win in the closing laps. Clinching in front of the fans at his home GP in Holland will be the final test of the season. The atmosphere, the tension is starting to build here at Essen. A lot of patriotism in the crowd. As he 100% fit is, is there no one who can slam. 
is dat Carlioli een topklosser is. Maar is, er is niemand uh, bestand tegen Hellings. There is Jeffrey Hellings. If he looks up, you'll see a whole nation rooting for him. Ik ben ook motorsportfan, dus daarom ben ik ook hier weer. Vorig jaar ook geweest. Dit jaar ja, kon ik natuurlijk niet missen met Herlings die een geschiedenis gaat schrijven. Nederlander, eindelijk. Echt super, ja, echt geweldig. From a very young age, the only thing he was focused on and the only thing that was important in his life was racing and winning races. But okay, winning brings extra obligations. That's of course you becoming a public figure. All our phones, everybody got called by journalists, written press, the Royal Palace. Is it okay if we call you on race day? Literally the night before the race, I slept like two or three hours. Couldn't sleep, kept thinking, you cannot lose anymore, but maybe a star crash or a crash and you get injured last minute. You know, that's all you're thinking about. Everybody's pretty much focused on you. Everybody's gonna look at you and you're so scared to mess up. But then when the gate drops, it's just, yeah, go time. It's Tony Cairoli who attracts the number 84 of Jeffrey Herlings. When we said Tony Cairoli would be fired up and he'll be turning up here to do one thing and spoil the party. And the noise for this man right here, it's a cauldron, it's electric. He wouldn't dare pass him through the waves, not in front of his home fans, would he? He's not even going to wait that long. Listen to the roar of the crowd as Herlings takes the lead from Cairoli. is not going down without a fight. He runs wide though, he goes for the momentum. Herlings cuts to the inside, takes the line away from the 222. They are on their feet. They're getting what they paid for. Herlings leads on lap two. Ricky Carmichael, I sat him down. He said a really interesting thing. He said that he wasn't ready to beat Jeremy McGrath. He was like, found it difficult to beat somebody that he always looked up to. Do you have anything of that inside you? No, I just feel good, you know, to being the guy I always looked up to because that means, you know, I'm, I'm beating one of the best. He was the guy, you know? And now to be being able to beat him and to battle with him in weekly base, no, I, I feel good. I don't feel bad about beating the guys I used to be a fan from. That's why you're a champion. <laughs> They're on their feet. Jeffrey Herlings is the 2018 FIM Motocross World Champion. And he does it here in Assen, in front of his home fans. Uh, it's awesome, you know, to, uh, to have won, you know, my championship in front of my home crowd. Thank you! Why? As a young boy, you dream to become MEGP World Champion. And winning it, your championship with a 1-1 at your home GP with that amount of crowd, all your family there, all your fans there. Yeah, just the most beautiful day in my life. Jeffrey Herlings holds for the first in the history of the Netherlands is there a Netherlander world champion in the MXGP? Not Overman. Not Overman. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think Jeffrey definitely can take over the role of Tony with what he shows on the track. That's bringing a lot of attention because, yeah, he's exceptional. I've been working with Jeffrey since he was uh, quite young. I went to so many hospitals with him and many times those moments were not so funny. And in these years he grew a lot. He sacrificed a bit, but now he has the, the payback because uh, if he would have gone out uh, like uh, the guys of his age and just having fun, disco and so on, could not be where he is. Okay, the championship's over. Every race he does, he wants to win. He's not gonna go to Italy to the last round and say like, oh, let's have a party and uh, let's just go and enjoy Italy. No, no, he'll only enjoy Italy if he can win it. And then there's the Motocross of Nations coming up, where again, he wants to prove the world that he's the fastest rider at the moment. Let's just talk about girls. Talk about Jeffrey's relationship with the ladies. If he find a good one, my not, but not a gold digger. My God, no, no way. <laughs> <laughs>
Jeffrey heeft een paar leuke vriendinnen gehad en uh, dat kwam ook goed. Maar ik denk dat hij er nog niet aan toe is. Hij wil gewoon zijn sport doen, wil zijn sport zo goed mogelijk doen. Maar ja, hij heeft er altijd gehad, die drang van ik wil rijden, ik wil een goede worden. Daar is je mee geboren. I want to be looked at like as an icon to the sport. But also I want to be a role model and I want small children to say, hey, there's hurlings. I want to be like him in 10 years. One day I was also looking up to the big heroes at the time, Ricky Carl, Michael, Stefan Evers, and I had so much respect for them. So I want to be like them and be the best I can be as a person in life and also as a racer and as an ambassador for the sport.